Hello everyone, Sienter here, and this is Final Fantasy 13. Oh, and I walked worry, into a cutscene. Be fine. Only kids like me know about that entrance. They'll find it. They'll call in a team and canvas the whole tunnel system. Then we better hurry. So, where's this thing come out anyway? Well, it, it. I, I don't really know for sure. What? We'll find out today. Always good to start an episode off with cutscene. Oh, and reading the data log. It's also how these things go. Oh yeah, the wood wraiths, Enki, and Enlil, or wood wraiths, apparently. Uh, people. Yeah, Grosh. That is some serious A's. Yagrosh is a Psycom officer who graduated with results second only to his fellow trainee, Jill Nabot. After apparently they like A's. After proving his leadership in joint missions with the Guardian Corps, his extensive battle experience earned him an early promotion to the rank of Colonel. Okay. Assigned command of the anti lacy operations in, in Palumpalum, uh, Rosh ignores branch rivalries when he requests Guardian Corps cooperation. His only concern is maximizing their efforts to eliminate the Lacy. Somebody who's actually practical. That makes him dangerous. Um, oh man, chapter 6. Chain of events. Saza son Daj was branded a Sanctum Lacy when he stumbled into the midst of a pulse attack on the Uride Gorge energy plant. With the help of the Lacy powers Daj gained during the incident, the military discovered the pulse falsi in bottom, instigating the purge. In the ensuing violence, Hope lost his mother, and Lightning and Snow witnessed Sarah's transformation into crystal. The whole series of events that was that has thrown their lives into chaos and threatens even now to shatter Cocoon's peaceful society can be traced back to your ID. Had that incident never occurred, could these tragedies have been avoided? Who can say? There's little point lamenting that which cannot be changed. Yet, though the past cannot be changed, it can be forgotten, for a while at least, and so Saz and Vanille make their way to Nautilus, a city of dreams, as storm clouds gather overhead. Meanwhile, Lightning and Hope enter one of the largest cities on Cocoon, as quite another kind of storm approaches. Uh, the capital of commerce? With events spiraling out of control, the Sanctum Army mobilizes all the forces under its command in an attempt to apprehend the Pulseless Sea, and thereby prevent Cocoon from descending into chaos. Prioritizing its mission over its reputation, Psycom accordingly enlists the aid of the local Guardian Corps soldiers. Right. Which is a change, right? Because the, previously they were prioritizing their reputation. Uh, under, the command, uh, under the general command of Colonel Roche, Units of troops occupy positions across Palumbalum in anticipation of a Lacy attack. Originally planning to take the Eden-bound train from inside the city, Lightning is now having second thoughts. She can't help but feel concerned when she sees the rage-fueled Hope throwing himself into battle. It doesn't help that it was Lightning herself who inadvertently encouraged him to concentrate on his goal of revenge in the first place. And that goal is what drives him now. He must complete Operation Nora and make Snow and the Sanctum pay for the death of his mother. But who can say how much time remains for a Lassie who ignores his focus? Not that we necessarily know what the focus is. Ignorant of her worries, Hope leads Lightning to an underground complex that will allow them to sneak past the Guardian Corps troops and into the city. Um, under the command of Colonel Rosh, Psycom and the Guardian Corps occupy positions across Palum Palum in anticipation of a Lassie attack. In order to avoid the increased security, Lightning and Hope travel through an underground complex that reaches far beneath the city. If they can enter the town undetected, they should be able to find a way to reach Eden, the capital that lies at the heart of Cocoon. Hope hurries onwards, eager to continue Operation Nora and exact revenge on Snow and the Sanctum. Yet, let's see who failed to complete their focus become Seath. It's uncertain when the exact moment of transformation will come, but time is not on their side. Even though there may be no light at the end of the tunnel, they have no choice but to keep trudging along in the dark. Hope's grim determination is a source of pain for Lightning. Her attempt at giving him a reason to survive has backfired, fanning the flames of his hatred and setting him on the path to a deadly confrontation. He is her responsibility. She has to protect him.
Oh, it's this platform that moves. It looks like we're on top of something that we sh that theoretically should be able to go inside of. Very strange. Huh. This reminds me of one of the grow beds, grow beds from Subnautica. I have some videos of creative mode on that if anyone's interested. I thought you said you explored these tunnels as a kid. No, not summon. Okay, these things seem like they're pretty fragile. Be ready for the next fight. Huh, these guys went down really quickly. Oh, uh, I should actually... I just remembered, because I've been playing... I mean, I haven't gotten as much Crysterium as I could have because I was skipping a ton of fights. But I still have a bunch that I can be spending here. And I should do that. Um... Oh, well, there's more that I can get her commando-wise. Okay, I mean, she does a lot of that, so let's boost that, I guess. Okay, getting her towards Quake. Um, let's boost his medic. Do I have a paradigm? Okay, I need one where he's a medic. Sure, she can be a commando. That seems fine. I just want wanted another option there. Like, the paradigm system is interesting and all. It just has the discrete problem of you keep changing party members so your paradigms keep getting wiped. Uh, which... The city's food production policy. Oh. Name's Carbuncle. Hi, Face. That's one of our enemies. Being Sanctum and all. So, kill him and cut off the food supply. That'll make us popular. I think people have enough reason to hate us, don't you? Yeah, you're probably right. Hungry people make for angry people. Um... But yeah, the fact that it keeps swapping party members so you cannot customize your own paradigms, you just keep using the ones the game makes you. It's kind of like, it's saying, oh, here's a strategic thing that you can set up to, to tweak how your battles are going. Because that's where a lot of the strategy and battles are. It's what paradigm you're using, right? Because otherwise, just, just the auto-command thing does basically what you want. Like, 90% of the time or more. 95, maybe. Um, so you just mash that from the vast majority of battles. So most of your, your decision-making is, what paradigm do I want to be in right now? But you don't really have much reason to customize paradigms and, and what setup you're using because the game is constantly swapping your team and therefore constantly resetting your paradigms and it's just like there's a lot of interesting ideas here but sort of the overall structure of the game up to this point has undermined them so uh carbuncle carbuncle is a sanctum falci charged with food production stationed in palumpalum's subterranean nutriculture complex Excuse me. This falci oversees a process of ultra-efficient hydroponic farming, employing mobile paddies and careful regulation of light and water. 
A parallel process within the facility generates raw protein to supplement the, the vegetable foodstuffs produced. Okay, so they don't eat animals, they grow meat, basically. I would eat lab meat, provided, you know, everything turns out well. Flanator. That certainly is some grimer, emergency hatted grimer age, eh? Why don't we use that as a landmark? Because we don't need landmarks. Look at this map. Like, this whole thing has been so freaking linear. I wonder how you get over to that spot. Not that there's any... Well, there might be a treasure chest on it. Actually, it makes me wonder. Let's head for the foul sea at the center. Oh, the cutouts are these little crates. Is there one of the things over here? Or... What? What even am I seeing? No, it's not here. It's that down there. Huh, it's got a couple chests on it. I wonder how I get there. Is there an elevator somewhere I'm missing? That's kind of off behind me. Now I'm curious. summon that or how does this work does this always go back up that way what happens if I stay on it does it go does that seem that would seem really far away yeah okay this contains plants Okay, now I need to figure out how to trigger this to move. Hmm, I think this just goes back and forth this way. I'm not sure how you get down there. Maybe you do need to fight that guy. I think I might want to avoid that. I'm not going to worry about it for now. Like, there's probably some useful treasure in there. But I also don't have any strong indication of how to get to it. And that guy looks dangerous, so I'd like to avoid fighting him. Maybe something else will make a clear way of how I get to that thing later. I don't know why they use one of the hydroponic bays as an elevator, though. That seems kind of strange to me. Okay, last time we fought one of these guys, it went down super quickly. It only has 3,000 HP. And we're dealing like several hundred damage. I see, so we staggered them so they couldn't do this rescue each other thing. So they're not, like, dangerous so much as they are just randomly time-wasting through random, t like, healing each other spam. What a peculiar design decision. 
That's how it's done. I mean, yeah, I mean, that certainly is a way that it can be done. Now yeah, water's weirdly glowing. Where does this go, I wonder? Up. Yeah, probably next with that one over there. Sure, why not? Oh, I can walk on this. I didn't expect to be able to. Look at us. Pulseless sea. Using a sanctum fallacy to tell where we're going. Sort of strange. Not really. We've relied on them our whole lives. The food we eat, the light, and water. It's all from the fallacy. You know, I think Cocoon was really built for them. The rest of us, we're just leeches. Parasites. You think? They protect us, nurture us, they take care of, well, normal people. They treat us like we're special, almost like. like we're pets. world, raised on a falci leash. It was the only life I knew how to live. When it was taken from me, I was completely lost. Without a master to follow, my life had no purpose. Hope, listen to me. This Lassie curse, it took everything from me. My future, my dreams. I didn't want to think, so I fought instead. As long as I was fighting, nothing else was real. I was running away. And you, Hope, you got swept along with me. But lightning, I don't understand. Operation Nora is over. What? I... No! You told me to fight! I made a mistake! What? You can't do this. You can't just build something up like that. Then abandon me. I won't abandon you. I won't. I can't just throw in the towel. Glad they have dots to tell me where I... Wait. Yeah, yeah. Dots to tell me where I came from. How am I supposed to just forget about all this? tankier, not more damaging. You're going down. Huh. 
I get it. You use sirens to rescue each other. This is such the weirdest enemy design. Like, so the enemy design the of the, these guys is so weird to me because it's like, um... Ah, uh, stronger resistances to certain things. Um... They are... Tanky? So what do we do now? Or let's see. Taking time bombs. Enemies of Cocoon. If we can't follow the plan, do we just lay down and die? I didn't mean we should give up. Then what battles do we fight? And against who? Tell me that! I don't know yet. You don't know yet? That's right. I don't know yet. But I do know we can't lose hope. <sighs> hope? There is no hope. Not for Let's see. There's you. It's my name, not who I am. I was just like you. My parents died. I had to be strong for Sarah, so I thought I needed to forget my past. And I became Lightning. I thought that by changing my name, I could change who I was. I was just a kid. Lightning. It flashes bright, then fades away. It can't protect. It only destroys. Sarah tried to tell me. But I wouldn't listen. job to deal with you. Typical. I threatened her. Come on, slowpoke. <sighs> Sorry. Got held up. <sighs> Where have you been? I am really late, huh? The only one who believed her was Snow. Don't say it! Don't say his name. It brings everything back. I keep playing it in my head. What happened to her? And then I see his stupid face and... And he's smiling. How can he smile when she's dead? Uh, I know! There's nothing I can do about it. I hate knowing that. No matter what happens, she's not coming back. When I was fighting, there was, there was no time to think about it. It felt good just to give in. But now you, you start talking about hope. I'm sorry, I messed up. No. It's my fault. Um. Yeah, a lot of stuff went on there in the cutscene. They're definitely kind of struggling with things. The, uh, the thing that I was saying about the design of the enemies that's very strange to me is that, like, they just heal each other. They're not really threatening, so they just take up time, and that to me is not a very compelling enemy design. Um, I wonder how many chapters there are. No way to live. The Sanctum Falci treat the people of Cocoon like pets. Upon realizing this fact, Lightning comes to understand herself. Since the moment she was born, she was raised under Falci care. Sheltered and protected, she never realized how much she depended on them. But after becoming a pulseless sea, she's removed 
from that protection. And like a child separated from her mother, she wanders in confusion and doubt. Added to the anxiety of being a fugitive, the grief of losing Sarah, and her rage at an unjust fate, Lightning finds herself on the brink of blackest despair. It is also clear now, thinking of a future without hope would be too much to bear, so she made the sanctum her enemy and sought to lose herself in mindless combat. But it was all just a way to avoid facing reality, and now she's got hope doing the same. If he loses himself in revenge, he may gain temporary respite from the horror of his predicament, but it will solve nothing. Overcome by guilt, Lightning tells Hope to abandon Operation Nora, much to the boy's disbelief. If he gives up on revenge, what else is there to live for? The two of the have much to think about. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the things that's interesting from a world design standpoint. That because the people of Cocoon have been told that Pulse Lassie and Pulse Falcy and everything are their enemies, if they ever become Pulse Lassie, they believe that they have to become an enemy of Cocoon, regardless of whether or not that's actually what the, like, desire is. Snow has rejected that notion. Um... And the rest of them are struggling with trying to understand their relationship with all of this. It's definitely interesting to me to kind of think about how some of that societal stuff affects things. And now we come to the rescue spam. If we can keep them rescuing each other, then they're no threat. And we'll just spam Blitz and that'll keep them rescuing each other. Until we get the stagger, at which point they're gonna be... So easy to kill that rescue doesn't do anything. I don't know, they're kind of an interesting enemy just because of that, but... Well, here's this big old red thing. I don't know what significance this holds, but it's got a save point. Don't mind if I do. See. Talk to your dad. What? Why? Fighting without hope is no way to live. It's just a way to die. I want you to find the hope you were named for. Staying alive, I can help you with, but I can't. I can't give you hope if you go to see your father. You think meeting my dad will will make anything better? He's never listened to a word I've said. He's just... He'll never believe all this Lassie stuff. You can always try. Snow believed Sarah, didn't he? Yeah. In a recently convened emergency conference, the Sanctum announced that the fugitive Lassie have been located. The military plans to apprehend the Lassie and carry out a public execution. These images coming to you live from the scene in Palom Polo. 
Survive. <sighs> That's some crowd. Gonna need a plan. <laughs> I Since when have heroes ever needed plans? Well, that was dramatic. Whoa. Take care of him. Lightning, listen to me. Get moving. No, no, you don't understand. Sarah's all right. She'll turn back. Take care of Hope. Wait! Then there were three. <laughs> mode, eh? <laughs> you might as well use the last bit, right? That's some numbers. Way to go. I don't have this thing I need. It's pretty beat up though. The snow needs Crystarium spent like crazy. Okay, that's such a ravager. How about this? Ah! <laughs> 
Shiva! I think something was supposed to happen that was going to allow me to take care of these guys uh, more fully. be fine. Assault mode is probably kind of unnecessary. Yeah. Wow, you could take a long time there. What's up? Where have you been? <sighs> I got taken in. Wait, what? Not by enemies. It was the cavalry, not Psycom. Leader's name is Reigns. He said he'd lend us Lucia a hand. So now, your hero is back. Why would the army help us? That doesn't make sense. The military's got all kinds. Not all of them like the Sanctum. Don't worry. I'll handle the bad guys. Come on. Hmm. Snow has access to the Sentinel role. Sentinels are defense specialists. By drawing enemy attacks and mitigating the damage via defensive abilities, they are able to protect the other members of their battle team. A Sentinel's abilities are essential when it comes to protecting battle team members with low HP like Hope. Draw enemy aggression away from allies with the Provoke ability and defend uh, while defending with Steel Guard to minimize damage to weaker party members. Okay. Sentinels cannot use the attack command, but they can still damage enemies. Select the Vendetta ability, and the Sentinel will counterattack enemies when attacked. Sentinels are at their best against numerous opponents when they can use their defensive abilities to shield allies while dealing damage via counterattacks. They become less effective when only a few enemies remain. At that point, it is best to turn Sentinels into commandos in order to finish off remaining enemies more quickly. The Agora and Palumplum. Uh, okay, so let's first clear out the enemy intel fields. We have our Tilters of Orion being a new variety. Uh, Psycom Hunters, so we got the Predator. Okay, I'm going to need to make sure I'm getting some of these guys uh, scanned. That will be important. Uh, Sid Reigns, an update here. Sid Reigns is the commander of the Wide Area Response Brigade, a military unit otherwise known as the Cavalry. His vaunted position in the army has afforded him an unobstructed view of the blind obedience the government shows to the Falci. In order to free Cocoon from the tyranny of these powerful entities, Reigns has begun enlisting the assistance of Fang and other pulseless sea. Interesting. The Weight of Vengeance. Lightning knows that Snow is not Hope's favorite person, but the only way to ensure the boy's escape from the swarm of Sanctum troops is to leave him with the man he despises. Her mind made up, Lightning shoves Hope at Snow, then charges the enemy soldiers, intending to cut a path through which they can escape. She may have failed to give him hope, but the least she can do is to keep him alive, even if that means sacrificing herself. After appearing out of nowhere with an idol on and felling soldiers left and right, Snow explains how the cavalry picked him up, the Rebel Brigade is part of the Sanctum Army, but it seems they have plans to topple the government with the help of the Lassi. Hope, of course, couldn't care less. The man responsible for his mother's death stands right in front of him. Operation Nora might be over, but his rage will not be satisfied by mere words. As Hope runs through streets sheathed in Shiva's ice, he can feel the shape of the knife lightning left in his care nestled against his side. Oh my. Okay, uh, as you might notice, this guy has... 11,000 Rysterium, so I'm going to spend some of this CP, thanks. Because uh, he could be a lot better. Um, let's start by boosting his Sentinel ability.
Ah, yeah, there's Vendetta. There's an accessory slot. Okay, and that's cleared everything with that. Some of these are really expensive. Okay, and that gets all of his Ravager stuff. Now we can get some of his commando things. Okay. Maybe not, especially. Oh, we need to go back to some of these because there's some branches here that... Anyway. We'll get them eventually. Um, I guess I might as well spend hopes as well while I'm here. Uh... Okay, well that got him Thundara, that's certainly nice. Ice tracks. Is that some kind of Lassie power? Uh kind of. Um actually I should look at what equipment he's using. His only other option is Wild Bear, which would increase his magic but lower his strength. I think I like him having more strength. Where's the... Let's give him a Tungsten Bangle. I have a better version of one of these. Yeah, let's give him a Power Wristband. That gives him Physical Wall 5. That seems like it could be useful. Mildly. This is what I'm wanting to dump stuff into. This whole system is very peculiar to me. Well, I think this episode has been quite long enough at this point. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. And uh, until next time, everyone, uh, take care and goodbye.